So I recently purchased this Rod Strix motherboard from ASUS, and even though this is an AM5 socket motherboard, the CPU that I've purchased is the 8500G, which has only recently been released. So it's unlikely it's going to work simply by connecting it into the socket here. I'm going to have to update the firmware on this motherboard in order to get it compatible with this CPU. Fortunately, ASUS made the process of updating the BIOS on their ROG Strix motherboards super easy. We don't even need to install the CPU or any RAM. All we are going to need is, of course, the motherboard itself, a power supply unit and a USB thumbstick. We need to go ahead and download the BIOS file from the ASUS ROG Strix website, get it onto the thumbstick, and then we can update from there again without any CPU whatsoever. First things first, we do need to get the actual BIOS file itself. So to do that, make sure you head over to the Republic of Gamers ASUS website and head up to the search option. And I'm just going to start searching for the actual model name of my motherboard. And you can see that the list appears here before I've clicked enter. And I'm just going to go ahead and select the B650E-I gaming Wi-Fi, which is the model that I have. It is really important, bit of a proviso here, that you do download the correct file. Okay, if you download a file for another motherboard and try to use that to update your own motherboard, you could end up in all kinds of trouble. You don't want to brick your hardware. So on this page here for my motherboard, I'm going to select support and then I'm going to select driver and tools. And from here, I'm going to select BIOS and BIOS even and firmware. And then we have the latest version of the BIOS here. If you wanted to get an older version for whatever reason, just select see or downloads and you can download additional versions there that have come out in times past. You would only do that if the latest version was unstable for you for whatever reason. But I'm going to go ahead and get the latest version. So I'm just going to download that now. And that has downloaded as a compressed zip file in my downloads folder. So I am going to extract this next. And if I open up the extracted folder, you can see there are in fact two files. The BIOS file along with a BIOS renamer file. And we need to use this first because... The file name has to be precisely what the motherboard is expecting. So what I'm going to do is double click the BIOS renamer file and then tap any key to continue. As you can see, when I do this, it is going to rename the file to this file name here, which is exactly what I need. So let's just tap enter. And there it is. OK, so this is the cap file now with the correct name. I'm now going to copy this over to a USB drive that I have inserted in my computer. And that's this one here. Make sure it is at least one gigabyte in size and make sure you have formatted it into FAT32. OK, not NTFS and not XFAT. It has to be FAT32. So I've done that already. I'm going to go ahead now and copy the cap file, not the renamer file. We don't need that anymore but the BIOS file itself into the USB drive. And that's all there is to it for the setup. So I'm going to go ahead and eject that now. So now I have the thumb drive prepared. It's time to get the BIOS updated and I'm going to show you how I do that. OK, so hopefully you folks can see here that I don't have the CPU installed. I don't have any memory installed. As a matter of fact, I have nothing installed. The motherboard is directly out of the box. So what I'm going to go and do now is connect two things, the 24 pin power connector into here. And I don't know if this is required, but I am going to connect this eight pin power connector into this CPU slot down here. It won't hurt being plugged in, but I don't know if it's needed, but what the heck I'm going to do so anyway. So let's go ahead and get these connected. Now I simply turn on the power supply. Okay, I've repositioned the camera now so that hopefully you can get a better look here. I've got this dedicated USB port here for a BIOS flashback. So I've got my USB thumb drive. Let's just plug that in there. Notice that I haven't turned anything on on the motherboard. I haven't tried to short the power switch or anything. All I've done is turn the power supply itself on. And now I have the BIOS flashback button here which I'm going to hold down for three seconds.
And now I don't know if you folks can see this easily, but there is a green LED that is now flashing. That means that the BIOS has been detected and is going to be updated. All I need to do at this point is wait. It can take a few minutes, so be patient. As long as the green is flashing, nothing has broken. It is just going through the procedure here. If this LED turns into a solid green light or a solid blue light, then there has been an error. In that case, you may need to double check your USB thumb drive and see if there is any issues with it. Some people have reported that by transforming the boot record into MBR, master boot record, solves the problem, but I haven't had to do that. As you can see, the update is progressing nicely. Okay, so I've just skipped ahead. We're a couple of minutes into the process now. I haven't touched anything. The green LED is still flashing, indicating that the process is continuing as expected. So I will continue to be patient here. The LED has actually now started blinking a little bit more quickly, which is absolutely fine. It probably means it is now actually installing the BIOS itself. Again, as long as we don't get a solid light, then everything is okay. Just a brief update, I'm currently about four minutes now into the process and the flashing is continuing. So it's normal again for this to take a little bit of time. It has just stopped blinking on me now, which means that the update has completed successfully. So happy days. Now, before I disconnect the cables from the motherboard, I am just going to turn power off at the PSU and also pull out my thumb drive and then it is safe to go ahead and remove these cables. The ASUS ROG Strix motherboard that I have here is now fully updated and compatible with the latest generation of AMD CPUs. Of course, this method will work not only with the particular model that I have, but pretty much with any ASUS ROG Strix motherboard. That BIOS flash button is just super helpful. So folks, if you wanna follow along with this build, then please do stick around. It is my first time building a mini ITX PC, so I'm not sure how smoothly it is going to go. So let's find out together, eh? Thanks for watching today. I'll see you soon.